There's a lot of people switching from Premiere to Resolve and talking about their experiences and making all of these dramatic videos lately, and I'm all for it. I actually switched to DaVinci Resolve from a 15-year-ish long career with Adobe Premiere Pro about five years ago, almost to this day. And while I was super resistant to it for a long time, and people still bring up the quotes where I say there's no way I'd ever switch away from Premiere, it's one of the best decisions I ever made in terms of video editing and software. But something consistent comes up in every single one of these videos, whether they land firmly in the Pro Premiere or Pro Resolve camp, that drives me insane. And I wanna show you how to fix it in this video, just as a brief aside, and we're gonna talk about why it matters, kind of at the end, I guess, just for the sake of brevity, because y'all like short retention stuff. There we go, I, I put my reflector up a little bit higher. I'm practicing, okay? The problem I'm speaking of has to do with crashing and how much Premiere or Resolve crashes, how frequently it happens, and what I see is all these dramatic reenactments where you see people with queues of just like hundreds of attempts at rendering a video and they all keep crashing in the same spot, or they just keep firing it off over and over, assuming something's going to change, when if there's something in your timeline causing your render to crash, 9.5 times out of 10, that's gonna happen every single time because something is wrong in that point. So you need to go fix it. You, you, you gotta go work on it. Instead of tallying how many times it crashed and inflating those numbers because you keep causing the same crash over and over, and over let's talk, I'm gonna show you how to fix it real quick. Here. All right, here's a sample project that while I don't have any crashed renders in my queue because I get rid of them, gave me a lot of crashes because I have tons of VFX, I have layers upon layers and nested sequences. And so we're just gonna say, for example, I watched, I rendered it a couple times, it crashed, and I kept consistently seeing it be to about, well, it's uh, something complex, this scene. This scene is the scene that it continued to crash at. Like I'd see this frame up because it shows a live preview of what it's working on when it is rendering. This is the last frame it hangs on every time Resolve either fails to render or just completely crashes to the desktop. You close and relaunch Resolve, then you go to your timeline, try to find the scene. Now this is really difficult because it requires you to be watching when it crashes. And I have had so many instances where I do have to fire off a render and then leave because it takes forever. Like for example, this video took 35 minutes to render and then I don't get to see where it crashes. So then you need to be able to reserve time to watch and see where it crashes. But I know about this scene is where it crashes. So then I go to the cut page. I find in my timeline the scene that is causing the crash, which is often these where I have like a whole bunch of different layers. And then you got to start either figuring, you, you, you got to figure out what the, what the cause might be. And there's a few different things it could be. There's never going to be a one size fits all thing. But the things to look at are, is your source file being referenced here a really difficult codec to decode? Like, is it a weird VP9 codec, something from like a weird camera or downloaded from the internet? Is it something that it might be having issues decoding? If so, then you go find the source clip, in which case this is my A-roll, so I'm not gonna fire off the entire A-roll render, but you know, you go over here, you find that clip. We'll, we'll do this one, right click it and generate optimized media. And then you can use that on your export. And so in your project settings, I've shown this before, but you can set up optimized media to be the codec that makes the most sense for your video. I don't know why it's set to uncompressed here. That is not what I use. These are new options. Super weird. Usually I recommend for render cache and for optimized media, either ProRes 422HQ if you're on Windows or if you're on Mac, that way it's using the hardware encoders and things like that, or DNxHRHQ on PC. So click save, make sure you have your directory set up like in my most recent export settings video, then right click generate optimized media. And it's going to create a new copy of your source file in that quality, which is gonna be better quality quality than you probably shot it with. And then you can see if that fixes it. Or what I highly recommend doing if you have a bunch of layers and effects and things like that is just taking that section, right click new compound clip, nest it in its own little compound clip here, also called a nested sequence in Premiere, and then right click render in place. Again, you want either DNxHR, GoPro Cineform, or ProRes 422HQ, you want as high, you know, you want it to be as high quality as you would expect to export. Render in source resolution, make sure all the effects are included. If you think you might make edits later, you can add some frame handles to it, but if you just nested it right now, there are gonna be no additional frames on the sides. Click render, it's gonna ask you where you want it to go. I have a cache SSD set up as I shared in my last resolve video. 
cache, resolve, render in place, and that project. And I click open, and it's going to render out that scene to its own video in a very easy to playback mezzanine codec, which is also going to be instant, effectively, to export in the final export. Now it's going to take a little bit, but it's actually going to go faster than when you're actually exporting because it's not having to process your audio effects, your audio tracks, your audio encoding, nor is it having to encode your final export part here to H.264, H.265 or anything like that. It's just rendering the effects and then putting it in a progress container. And then you go back to your render, either clear out the failed one or just make a new copy. Tell it in the advanced settings here. Use optimized media and fire it off. I have a whole video dedicated to optimizing your render settings. And that is, that's all you need to do. Don't just sit here and fire off the same render over and over and over and expect it not to crash in the same spot. If something there is causing it to crash, it is going to cause it to crash nine times out of 10. Sure, every once in a while it might not, but it's pretty much going to. And it's the same thing in Premiere. I don't actually have any active Premiere projects at this point, but I will make a very basic one to show you the same idea. That is, if Premiere ever decides it wants to open. Part of why I don't use it anymore. There it goes. So very similar here in Premiere. I've just thrown some clips on the timeline to simulate this kind of thing. Usually in Premiere, if I go ahead and hit Control M to export, if you are exporting in media encoder specifically, it doesn't work with the just direct export option. But if you export in Adobe Media Encoder, it will give you a log when it crashes and it will tell you the time code at which point it crashes, which is really cool. I've attempted to export my project and then I manually stopped it. You can see here either there will be a yellow triangle if it fails, a check mark if it completes, or a red circle if you stopped it yourself. Click on that. It's going to take you to a text file. The text file gives you lots of great information about your project, how long it took to encode if it was successful, and at what point, what point it crashed. Sometimes it'll give you an exact time code, sometimes it'll just tell you how long it spent rendering, and you can kind of try to guesstimate from there. This will continue to update with all of your files until Adobe Media Encoder updates and then it'll have a new version for the new version and yada yada. So super useful there. Then you go into your project, as usual, find out where that is. Now you don't have the same generate optimized media options as you might in DaVinci Resolve, but you can manually transcode the footage with Adobe Media Encoder and replace it to say ProRes or something like that, or you can just find the section that you know is problematic. My zoom in hotkey is not working. There we go. And say select that clip, or if it's a bunch of layers, again, if you have like a bunch of layers on top of each other here, select them all, right click, and you want to nest. That'll turn it into its own nested sequence here. And then you hit X, you select it and hit X, or just manually go to like the start and end point and hit I and O to set in and out points. And then you go to sequence, render effects in and out or just render entirely in and out. Render effects will only render the specific effects and not just the full clip. I like to do render in and out and it's going to render out your previews based again, kind of like in Resolve based on what your sequence settings are set to and it will be able to export using that. But if you're gonna export using that, you do wanna make sure your sequence settings are correct. So find your sequence. Sequence one, go to sequence settings, your video previews here. You want to make sure that this is, a, again, a mezzanine format like ProRes, DNxHR, Cineform. You want to make sure the resolution is the full resolution of your project. Maximum bit depth and render quality do not affect anything anymore. I don't know why they're still in here. And then render it out. And then once you have done so, in your export settings, under general click use previews and then that difficult section that keeps causing the crash it'll just use the previews instead of trying to re-render it save you a lot of time now this means a lot to me because i think it's an unfair representation of premiere or resolve if users aren't taking the time to figure out why things are crashing and like i said i keep seeing these videos where people just tally up how many how many crashes they've had when they're like oh yeah crash five times in a row on the same when i do the same thing over and over then stop doing that same thing the same way this is, this is a hard pill I had to swallow back as a Premiere user that still applies today to, you know, Resolve. Because Resolve as, you know, back in version 15, it was, it was as stable as it gets. 
as time goes on, especially with new updates, like I feel like 18.6 was super rushed out just to appease Apple when 18.5 was still a beta. Uh, it, there are there are bursts of instability as it gets more popular and they update more and try to appeal to you know the industry a little bit more. You have to pay attention to what causes a crash, and you, the user, the the video editor needs to put in the effort to resolve that. The program cannot do that for you. And there's so many potential causes of crashes. Uh, network stalls, if you have your footage over the network. Cloud disconnects. I can't stand Blackmagic Cloud stuff because I'm constantly having connection issues with it, so I just don't use it. Uh, certain effects applied in certain ways at certain resolutions. Certain source codecs, like if you download a bunch of YouTube videos, they're often in VP9 or something, which seem like they play fine, and then you go to render and it crashes every time. On Windows, that happened a ton for me. It doesn't happen as much as on Mac, but then you have to do the generate optimized media thing I showed you. There's so many little things like that that you, the user, have to keep in mind. It's not like the old a Avid days where you only had one codec you could edit and everything had to be conformed to the specific workflow and thus all problems were kind of eliminated. Modern video editors let you use every possible codec and effect and type, file type and whatever that you have, and they all come with their own sets of issues and problems, and there, there's a lot of workflow things you have to work out before you get to that point. I mean, you think about, I, I see a lot of people who are like, how can I not edit a YouTube video without 50 million crashes, but people make a movie in this program? That's because the people doing the, the, the cutting room floor level of editing for movies aren't doing the VFX work and the color grade work and all of that at the same time. They're getting mezzanine files that have all of those effects already applied, which makes the process a lot more smoother and a lot more stable. So please, instead of spending weeks, hours making a video about why one LE, NLE sucks over the other, why how many crashes you've had in one or, one or the other, maybe take 30 minutes and figure out why you're getting crashes and everyone's lives are gonna be a lot easier. And if you happen to find this weird specific quirk that causes the same crash across every project or something, report on that. Submit it as a bug report. Tell people about it so they have a fix for it. Make a tutorial on it. But it really makes me scratch my head when I see people spend hours, weeks, whatever, making these videos, comparing the two, or talking about just their crash experience, when it seems like they've put no effort into troubleshooting the crash. And not everyone needs to be a tech expert or whatever, but if, if it's costing you hours and hours of work and thus money, maybe try to fix it instead of software hopping. Just some thoughts. That's all I got for you. Remember to be kind, rewind, go check out my previous video on export settings for Resolve, and go check out all of my new assets and my, my color grades, and I do have a bunch of photo prints I'm adding to my website, glitch.mov, and join us on Discord. See ya. Freaking love this new sweater. I've been hunting for it for months. This is from the, 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 the 80s, like, ah, I'm so happy. This is also my new camera for the new workflow for shooting for these videos. It's supposed to be, I'm supposed to be filming in C-Log. I'm realizing it's outputting a lot, I think. Hmm.